What's going on everybody? Victor here. Today I'm with my good buddy, Johnny Stibile right here. How you doing guys? You guys have seen him in a bunch of videos. So Johnny's actually a guy down here in South Florida. He's put me on my biggest ever clown knife fish, peacock bass. We filmed a bunch of freshwater videos. So if you guys are looking for a good guide in South Florida, this is your man right here. But he also has his own YouTube channel, which you guys should check out below. And today we're joined by our good friend, Gary right here, all the way from Georgia. Yep. Hey, how are y'all? Today, we're after bluegill, or known as brim, panfish. Uh, people call them different things, sunfish. So, I like to use a long shank hook. And that is because sometimes those bluegill will eat the whole worm super deep. And this just allows me to get the, the hook out of its mouth. So, I, that's why I prefer the long shank. These are just regular um, earthworms. I like, I prefer the red wigglers, which we'll be using later. We just had these, so um, I don't like to use a weight. I like a natural sinking presentation. So yeah, he's all fired up. We're gonna get him in the water. There's one, that's a nice one too. Oh, that's a good one. It is a mine chichilid, cichlid. These are like freshwater sheep's head. They fight just as hard as a sheep's head. They kind of look like a sheep's head and um, they're very invasive. This is a Mayan cichlid, very pretty. These are originally down here because they were aquarium pets, so. This particular fish is really one of the main reasons that the peacock bass were introduced to the state of Florida. It was to help control species like this that um, were basically introduced through the aquarium trade. And um, out of all that, you know, these guys would destroy bass beds and, you know, it was basically to conserve the bass population, so. Um, they've done a pretty good job. This is a pretty small one to pull out of Lake Ida like that, but um, he'll produce millions of fry per year. And uh, I don't kill these guys. I, um, I keep them alive. I, I just release them. It's totally legal to release them. Gary's got one on. Ooh, Gary. That feels like a bluegill. Oh man, he stuck me. There's something down Ooh. there. There's something down there that Gary, is Gary, big what time. did you hook? <laughs> There's a something down there at the end of the boat ramp that the fish run under you got the, the lake you got the yeah, lake right monster there. he he done snapped your rod got the hook back what is going on i have no idea what gary just hooked but his rod just snapped right there i like to wacky rig my worms um i think it gives them that good little action like you see there and i imagine they do that underwater too so wacky rig is right in the middle wacky rig is right <laughs> wow say that three times fast Wacky rig is right in the middle. I just got a bite. Here it does. Oh, it's a good one too. It's a real good one. This is a good one, y'all. This is what we call a flat-footed giant right there. That is a flat-footed giant bluegill for South Florida. Still got the worm hanging out of his mouth there. They're fired up. We got to keep catching them because you never know when these guys are going to shut off. They'll take a siesta, if you will, for like 45 minutes and uh, then you gotta wait 45 minutes to catch them. But that is a beautiful, these things will flip flop right out of your hand. This may be a different species, but um, I think he's just got a weird ear that's not elongated there. So this portion right here that I'm pointing to, see how the ears are different, that little blue piece right there? That's where they get the blue gill, cause it's on their gill, but everybody calls it an ear. So this one is just a lot wider than the blue gill and it's a slightly lighter color. So. I gotta look that up if it's a different species or if this is just a weird, a weird bluegill. This is the typical bluegill color. So if you go and buy, you know, a worm or an artificial bait or anything that's got a bluegill color, this is typically what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be dark blue with some green, um, you know, speck in, or flakes in it. Um, this one is more silver. You know, it's got that bluegill shape, a typical sunfish shape. So funny thing, Gary actually found johnny right here that's right through the clown knife fish video that we filmed together so it's nice to see that you know when we promote charter captains or i promote my friend johnny he gets business out of it and gary and johnny actually became really good friends you guys took a road trip up to kentucky recently right that, that's right we did 10 days we drove to kentucky tennessee alabama which all those videos are on my channel if you guys want to check them out. And we had a blast and yeah, me and Gary are really good friends now. I think it's really important. Now granted, this is beer drinking fishing. I mean, you could totally put these in a rod holder and just set them down and wait for the rods to bend over. But for me to not get these fish gut hooked, I, 
Oh, I just thought I just had a bite. Let me cast it back out. Um, I'm watching, I leave a little belly in my line and I'm watching that line the whole time. And as soon as that line moves, the first little, it moves about two inches and you'll just see it go just like that. That's my bite right there. Cause those bluegills will eat and they'll stay in the same exact spot. Now that, that might be something a little bit bigger actually. Might be something a little bit more like a big bluegill. Oh. Oh. Big bluegill, look he's pulling drag. Yeah, it's a nice one there. A real flapjack. So I waited a little bit too long on that one after I just was talking about it. And um, you could tell he's bleeding, he's dripping some blood on the boat there, but um, that That's hook. That's why you want that long shank hook, huh? Yep. Really that is a good one, Gary. Holy I like it. Yeah, I like it when they're clean like that, you know? Gary is from Georgia. What would you call this fish? That's a jumbo bluegill. That's what we use for uh, cooking and eating and also for catfish bait. You guys also call those brim, right? No, uh, some people call them brim, yep. Yep. Panfish, a lot of people just call them panfish. But yeah, that's a good brim, good bluegill. Take that thing out there and catch an 80 pound flathead with him. Really? You guys use those? Yeah. People oh. don't like it, but yeah. <laughs> you guys just heard Gary say that they use those for flathead up in Georgia, which is where Gary's from. That's one thing I've never done on the channel and I'm dying to do. Me and Johnny have been talking about doing a trip up with Gary, get on some giant catfish, because this guy, he gets on the big kitty cats. And that's, I've always wanted to catch a big catfish, never caught one. You can lip these guys if they open their mouth, if they're big enough. On. Yeah, they just turned on like that. Mm-hmm. That's not a bad one either. That's one for the frying pan, huh? So when you're unhooking these guys, what's important, especially when you're fishing with little kids, is that you don't get this in their hands or your hands. Those are all needle tips. So what you gotta do is you gotta take your pinky, put it right here, and lay those down as you bring your thumb down so you get to where you've got the squeeze on the fish and then you can handle that fish however you need to to get that hook out. You wanna make sure you get your fingers down his spine so those fins can't come up and get you and just you just hold him, take the hook out, whatever you gotta do. Especially with little kids, don't let them get finned because they won't wanna fish for a little while after they get finned. So that right there is a vieja cichlid and uh, they're just part of the cichlid you know, family here. And um, we really don't ever catch these unless we're using worms. That, that fish right there you could sell to a pet store for like $80. All right guys, we just moved to another spot, see if the bluegill are snapping over here, but a quick message from today's video sponsor, HelloFresh. As you guys know, Brooke and I travel a ton to make videos for you guys. Recently, we tried HelloFresh meal kits to simplify our lives while at home and are loving it. HelloFresh delivers fresh quality produce from the farm to your house in less than a week. They have 30 dinner recipes every week and I love how we can customize our options based on the protein we want. I love their foolproof step-by-step -step recipes and fresh pre-portioned ingredients that cut out meal prep and trips to the grocery store. They offer fit and wholesome recipes Recipes, making it easy to eat well without sacrificing flavor so you can maintain your goals and feel good about your food choices with HelloFresh. That's something that's super important to me because I turned 30 this past year and I made a promise to myself that I would get in the best shape of my life. So HelloFresh makes it super easy to track calories. And as an added bonus, HelloFresh is the first carbon neutral meal kit company and nearly all packaging is recyclable. I made some Mushu pork bowls for Brooke and I the other night and they were delicious. Check it out. Two Mushu pork bowls for Brookie and I took less than 15 minutes to make and tell me that doesn't look good. I am so excited to try it. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code LANDSHARK16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Everything we've tried so far has been absolutely delicious and you guys know I do not mess around when it comes to my food. Now let's get back to fishing. Big thank you once again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Honestly, it makes our life a lot easier, especially with the amount of traveling we do. We come home, we got great recipes in the fridge, and that's all there is to it. Come on, bluegill, here we go. 
You know, I have still haven't caught one single big bluegill. You guys have caught all the big ones. I've just been catching the dinkuses. My worm hasn't been moving, so you gotta think either he's sitting there and just staring at him and analyzing that worm and waiting for that worm to just twitch the perfect little way to make it look appetizing. Oh, Gary's got a good one. That's a slab, Gary. That one's awfully purple, huh? Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but bluegill always looked to me like they're just, they're too big for their own body. <laughs> like they're way too big for their head. They're way too big for their mouth. They're just a funny looking animal. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, that's yep. a good one too. That's not a bad one at all. That, that's an eater. Oh yeah. That one's more oh, orange. Man. These guys will mess you up. See these spines that Gary was talking about? Those are razor sharp right there. So you see every single bluegill is a little bit different. This one's got a lot of red and orange on his tail. He's got a little black spot right there. But the signature thing that they all have in common is this little ear right here, right by his gill, that black spot. That's what kind of gives them away right there, that bluegill. Oh, aggressive bite. Ready for this, Johnny? Yep. I let him eat it. And you give him the little one, two. Oh my gosh, he bite was a lot bigger than he is. You know, we are very, very lucky and we take it for granted. You guys know me, I'm a salty guy, but every single time I go freshwater fishing, I'm like, I gotta do this more often because we seriously take it for granted. Florida has, I'm willing to say it now, the best fishery in the world. You guys want to go freshwater fishing, saltwater fishing year round, the amount of diversity in species. We are so incredibly beyond spoiled and I'm beyond spoiled and lucky to be able to do this as a job. So I want to thank you guys for watching and people like Gary, because people like Gary are literally the reason me and Johnny get to do what we do. So shout out to you, Gary. Thank you. So this is a small bluegill we caught. We're throwing these back here, but if you catch a whole bunch of these and you want to eat them, you just take these guys and cut their head off, gut them out and just put them in cornmeal and fry them whole. And those are delicious. They aren't a lot of meat on them, but they are really good to eat, and you can catch a bunch of these in the afternoon. You make sure you eat the tail, right? Yeah, the tail and fins are crispy, like potato chips. Yeah. Oh! Nice bluegill. Just a blue. Damn, I guess the spot is firing off, huh? We've been here a minute. Not even. <laughs> I didn't even shut the boat off yet. I shut the boat off. Gary with a nice... Big old bluegill on the first cast. I got one. I got one. Yep. That one's got some shoulders, huh? Well, this one's a, it's probably a mine cichlid if I had to take a guess. Oh, he's in the motor. Oh no, it's a bluegill. It's a bluegill. Holy smoke. Dude, that's a giant. Oh, oh, this is a different kind. See how he's got that red ear? Yep. Like the red line over the ear there? Uh -huh. That's a shellcracker, also known as a red-eared sunfish. They look kind of more like a crappie. They have that speckled pattern on the bottom. That's the first one I've caught in a long time. Usually we just catch the regular bluegills. They're so much better looking than the regular bluegills. They got that bright green pattern. Awesome. Yeah, wow, he choked it too. We got our cooler here. Let's shine this in here, Johnny. We got our cooler full of bluegill. You guys see, even on ice, they all kind of take on a different color. See, this one's super silver. This one's darker, got a little bit more red in them. Well, this is the red ear, right? Uh, yep, that's a red ear. It's the red ear bluegill. Now, I know the southern boys, what they like to do is cook these whole. You chop the head off, you got them, you scale them. But we're not doing that, because I'm going to do a gumbo out of these. So we are going to actually fillet them. They got a lot of head meat. It kind of looks like he's got a giant brain right there. So I'm just going to follow it around, around that rib cage and down here. It's pretty much like filleting a snapper, like a freshwater snapper. Big scaly fish with a big rib cage. Now, instead of going through the rib cage, I'm gonna go over it, right here, break through the pin bones. Break through the pin bones over that rib cage, down on the other side. Work out that floor. Just like that. 
You see all that meat? Some people bypass the rib cage altogether on fish like crappie or bluegill or even snapper, but then you're kind of missing all this little flesh right here. But you guys see, see how awkward their bodies are? Look at all that meat they got above their head. It's just like they can't fit into their own body or something. Kind of look like little aliens, don't they? They have this huge hump on them. Okay, now we skin. And this is a seven inch Dexter flexible foil I'm using. Perfect knife for these small fish. The smaller the fish, the smaller the knife I like. And it's flexible, so it really contours to these smaller fish. See if we got a set of pin bones in here. Yes, we do. We'll get rid of these. And just like that. That's like the perfect little filet to fry up. We only got 25 more to go, so I'm about to put Johnny and Gary to work. This is what about 20-ish bluegill look like. I might have set a few aside to save for another day, but this is the majority of the bluegill right here. And there's a lot of different colorings. I don't know if it has to do with, we caught some red-breasted sunfish. I don't know if those are maybe a little bit of a different color, but you see you get some like grays, some are super white, some are super yellow. So what I did, I hit these in a little brine of sugar and water real quick for like five minutes, just to kind of get rid of that muddiness um, and any scales that were remaining. I'm just gonna hit him with a little bit of this. This is a little seafood uh, Creole blend right here. Very similar to a blackened seasoning. And we're just gonna dust these. Now I'm not gonna go heavy with this because this is very salty and these fish already were brined so I don't wanna overdo it with the salt. This fish is gonna get folded into our gumbo. So I got the Camp Chef set to 230, real high smoke. And ideally I'd want a wire rack underneath these, but they're so thin I'm afraid of them sticking to anything. So we're gonna go right in here. And we're gonna just let these do their thing for about 30 minutes. Let them really get incorporated with that smoky flavor. So you guys see, this thing is dumping smoke right now. So all that smoke, we just wanted to kind of seep into the fish. So check this out, about a year ago, I made this right here. This is lobster stock. We do a lot of lobster diving. When we save our carcasses, I like to make a stock, and this stuff freezes so well for months and months to come, and it's gonna be the perfect thing to use for our stock, for our gumbo. Instead of a chicken base, you know, we're not cooking seafood, but you wanna get a fishy flavor, this is liquid gold right here. So for the last about 30 minutes, I've been making a roux, which is equal parts of some type of fat. I just went in with canola oil and flour. And when you do this over medium heat for a long time, you get this real rich, thick, nutty, um, almost smells like your bacon bread, like just substance. A roux is so delicious, it's what you need for a good gumbo. So the longer you take it, it's gonna get just like a nuttier and nuttier and more rich, deep flavor. The Holy Trinity in Cajun cooking, which is celery, bell pepper, and onion. So we're gonna go in with this right now. So that roux, not only is it gonna be the base of flavor for our gumbo, but it also, it, it'll thicken it up because it's flour, kind of like cornstarch. Once you add a liquid to it, it's gonna give it a thicker consistency so you're not just, it's not a soupy mess, you know? So I just added in about eight crushed cloves or minced cloves of garlic and I'm gonna let it cook for about a minute. And you guys see this, look look at these veggies. You see how thick they are? They're goopy. Now we're gonna add our lobster stock that I showed you earlier, but that's how you get that nice thick gumbo-like consistency is that roux. Now I'm gonna add some andouille sausage. You gotta add some flavor in there. I'm gonna start to add in my lobster stock as I see fit. So I'm gonna add in about half of this right now. And ideally gumbo is something, the longer you cook like any super stew, the better the flavors are gonna incorporate into each other. So let's check on our fish. It's been about an hour. Now, if I really wanted to smoke these guys, like I said, I would have made sure that they could get the smoke from underneath and I probably would have smoked them for two, three hours, but we didn't have a lot of time. I just, I wanted to give them a little bit of flavor rather than just throwing them in the gumbo. Nice flaky bluegill. Mm. They got a little smoky flavor on there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the bluegill. And I don't want it to fall apart too much. I just want like bite-sized pieces. 
and we're just gonna kind of fold it in here. And if I didn't want to, or if you don't want to, you could certainly just skip the whole smoking process, but I think it adds a nice flavor. For the final touch, I know it's not traditional, but either as bluegill gumbo, I'm gonna go add in with a little bit of sweet corn, because I think it's gonna be delicious in there. Look at all of that bluegill. Just all good stuff. All right, here we go with the gumbo. Look at all that. So, there is probably 50% of this gumbo is bluegill. We're gonna finish off with a scoop of rice. And you gotta do fresh scallion. Okay, and then just for a little bit more flavor, we're gonna hit it with a little more Creole seasoning right on top here. Let me see, I want you to taste some of that bluegill, that smoky bluegill, see how you like it. Yeah, there's a nice chunk there's of There's a good chunk of bluegill. Oh yeah, the bluegill's good. The bluegill's real good. Well, this is my first time having bluegill, and I'm pretty sure it's my first time having gumbo that I can at least remember. Both of them together is absolutely delicious. Victor killed this. All the flavors are so good. You can have, you have that smokiness, you got the sausage in there that's so good, and there is a lot of fish and it's like you really enjoy each bite of fish that you get. Every, it just, this is just really, really good. You guys have to give this a try. You don't have to use bluegill with it. You can do something different, but give this a try. It's very, very delicious. I filmed a bluegill video and it's not posted yet. And by the time this video comes out, it probably still won't be posted. And I watched a lot of bluegill videos because I wanted to get some ideas and everybody in their bluegill video fries their bluegill. And bluegill is a nice, like, flaky fish. But putting it in the gumbo with all the andouille sausage and the corn and all the, the roux, it's got so much good flavor and the heat just dances around on my palate. So it's just really, <laughs> it's just a really flavorful gumbo. And, and if you're gonna go catch bluegill and, and you guys just fry them, you gotta switch it up, man. Make a gumbo out of bluegill because why not? This is amazing. Uh, it's definitely a little oh, spicy. It's cleaner, cleaning out the sinuses a bit, but uh, very good. Very it's good. delicious. You could put this in a restaurant and I'd order two more bowls. Awesome. It's that good. And I eat gumbo coast to coast. Very good. A lot of depth, a lot of flavor, good spice. How come you don't ever give me that gumbo <laughs> food review when I win? <laughs> I made him grouper. It's good. Okay, thanks, bud. I'm, <laughs> That's a lot coming from Apollo because this guy, this guy can cook. I gotta have Apollo on the channel one day. Brooke's birthday is this weekend, so we're gonna do some briskets on the grill. This guy's the pit master right here. We gotta have a special guest appearance by Apollo. Let's do it. We're doing yeah. it. We'll start up the Easy Bake Oven and go. <laughs> <laughs> you can't post that. I'm leaving that in there. He calls the camp chef the Easy Bake Oven because it's just that easy to cook stuff but I'm very, very happy with this, guys. None of it would happen without Johnny, so you guys check him out. If you're looking for a chart in South Florida, Johnny's your guy. If you're looking for a new YouTube channel to subscribe to, Johnny's your guy. If you're looking for great adjectives to describe things, Johnny's your guy. <laughs> check him out in the description box below, and thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.